This is a scene that I found quite interesting on Dungeness Beach. I like the idea of this large hulk wreck stranded in the middle of a beach and I started to sketch out the main shapes of the boat and put the horizon in. Trying to not do it in the middle of the composition but to slightly to one side. Uh, I took quite a long time to sketch the shape because I wanted to make sure that the angle was was correct and so I did spend a little bit longer than usual drawing out the boat. I also added in the railway line which helped to show distance and I continued to draw most of the detail and then I put in the sky very quickly. It was a very very bright day so the sky was very blue but I tended to leave some areas to show slight cloud and putting in some of the detail in between the spars but very very light wash so that I could wait for it to dry and then build up on top so it's very important not to overdo the first layers and the first washes so very very watered down colour and try to keep as much white in the picture at this stage so I'm using quite a wide brush and I continue to use this brush I think through most of the painting so I'm putting in some of the yellows and the beach is quite orangey yellow and then I'm starting to put in a very thin wash for the basic blocking of the boat. But still putting in a few layers to start with. It's quite a grey sort of base colour. Still using a wide brush. At this stage the sun was quite intense and there was a lot of shadow on the left hand side of, of the boat. So I tended to work on that side for a little bit. And the versatility of a wide flat brush is something that really pleases me because it's, it's good for putting in large blocks of colour. It's also very good for different angles, putting in strips of colour and also on its side using it as a very thin drawing of line. So it's something that uh, I think works really well and speeds up the painting. I'm still looking at this dark shadow and putting it in very slightly layer by layer. So I didn't want to overdo the strength of the colour too soon. So I'm using sort of Prussian blue, Payne's grey, a little bit of red. So this is about after about an hour. I'm beginning to look at the other side of the boat. And you see the sky is, is very intense blue, but I'm not going to touch the sky, I'm going to leave that and just work on this shape. Slightly bluer shadow now coming in, which is a Prussian blue as a wash, and it's drying very quickly, which helps. While I'm doing this I'm looking all the time around the image that I'm working from just to see where else there are some colours that I can use while I've got colour on my brush and in the shadow just below the boat it's quite an intense dark. It's not black, it's more sort of greys and blues in it. So I'm still looking at the shadow, letting it dry. It's beginning to take shape now. 
It's also quite strong ready rust colour on the rails. So I'm putting those in. While the sun's really strong, gives a nice shadow. You can see quite close up there the brush marks. You can stipple, you can use the, the different angles of the brush to make different marks. Quite, quite delicate lines with the brush on its side. We need some more shadowing, some more tone on the right hand side where the sun is hitting the, the shape of the, the boat. With watercolours it's quite um, difficult to see the final colour because after it's dried completely it takes several hours you can see a change in the colours sometimes it dries a lot lighter than you expect it to and one of the dangers is going back and doing a bit more painting once you think you've finished and this is, this is something you really have to be careful about and this uh, idea of knowing when to stop you can't be taught you have to feel it you can see there you can see the layers quite clearly and then there's this rusty metal winding mechanism next to the rail which just took up a space that was in the corner I tend not to paint right to the edges of the paper I mask out a frame with masking tape and this gives a nice pleasing white edge but also it, your eye has to go from one place to another in a painting the composition has to work so putting this large sort of winding cog worked quite well to bring you into the picture otherwise it would have been a bit of a space it was would be quite awkward to leave there's also a lot of net fisherman's nets draped around and I thought this would make quite a nice contrast with the shingle on the beach and then putting in a little bit of texture there with the brush trying to suggest that there's stones doing this with a sort of intense cadmium yellow and slight yellow ochre and a tiny bit of red A lot of um, the greenery that's on the beach is sea holly, sea cabbage. It's this sort of um, a thick, yeah, a sort of grey green coloured leaf crops up here and there. Makes a nice sort of relief from the stones. So I'll put some of those clumps in. I'm just bring in a few tiny bits of very intense dark Payne's grey just to show that there's these sort of details of the, of the spars and what I do is I usually leave this the very darkest darks till the very end of my painting the sun's still very strong, very bright. So you get these under under shadows. I'm just highlighting, intensifying the the reddy orange of the rust on this bit of equipment. Just gives it a nicer, a warm sort of finish to what is mostly a sort of grey coloured subject and shadows are going in there, just a few little shadows and I was quite pleased with it